Monday Night Raw went on the air on January 11, 1993 with the company as it did years back with the pay-per-view industry, looking to get ahead on the clear upwards trajectory of cable television with Raw's home in the USA network increasing its availability in the past decade from less than 30 million homes to around 60 million by 1993 while growing by the year with the debut show drawing the 2.5 rating to increase on the last episode of Primetime Wrestling's 2.2, with the WWF after a straightforward first episode highlighted by a show-long angle of Bobby Hina trying to enter the building, taking the biggest step to establish Raw as the company's new flagship show over the next two weeks by giving away a major pay-per-view caliber match on television with Ric Flair vs Kurt Henning going 20 minutes on January 25th in a Loser Leaves WWF match, in what would also be Flair's last match in the company with him about to return to WCW shortly after. Seeing the next two weeks of Raw increasing on the debut audience to 2.6 and 2.8 rating. As Flair returned to the company he helped build and the most synonymous with his career on February 27 to draw the biggest WCW audience on Saturday in over a year, in a rare situation both companies benefited simultaneously with Raw entering the three rating range with over 2 million homes tuning in for the first time in February 1993 with Hulk Hogan returning to the place he put on the map with its biggest star in history debuting on Raw in a memorable show long build for his return promo with McMahon on February 22, as after growing tension between Hogan and McMahon coming off the legal battles of the past year and the realization that the peak of the Hulkamania Golden Age boom period is in the past, making it Hogan's first WWF TV appearance in almost a year first in a rare shoot-like interview addressing the media wave of the past year, while 30 minutes later coming out in front of the Manhattan Center crowd to set up his return to the ring in a WrestleMania 9 match in what would also be Raw's highest rated month of its first year. With Vince McMahon declaring in a media interview in early March that the company turned a major corner with their new Monday night flagship program leading to ratings starting to go back up. Raw held steady throughout the month near the 3 rating range in 1.8 million homes during the build-up to WrestleMania 9 on April 4, drawing its biggest number on March 8 with a 3 rating for a show featuring a Hogan and Beefcake promo accepting Money Incorporated's challenge for the WrestleMania tag match along with the main event of Kurt Hennig vs Rick Martel closing the show. While the first ever post-WrestleMania Raw took a hit going head-to-head -head with strong competition from the NCAA Finals, the following week saw the real follow-up of the event which saw Hogan winning the WWF title in a major surprise following the Bret Hart vs Yokozuna main event, getting a big boost of interest with Raw having its highest rated and most watched show to date drawing a record 3.4 rating with approximately 3 million viewers making it the highest rated weekly wrestling show in almost two years with Raw also closing the month strong with its third biggest audience to date being watched in over 1.9 million homes on April 26, for a show which for the first time also saw Raw entering the top five most watched cable programs of the week featuring Lex Luger vs Crush and a Michaels and Perfect interview segment with Vince McMahon. With the Perfect vs Michaels feud continuing in May including a memorable parking lot brawl to open the show on May 10, a major title change took place a week later with Shawn Michaels after an in-ring promo with McMahon to set it up and further establish the spontaneous feel of the show, dropping the IC title to Marty Jannetty 30 minutes later after Hennig's interference, with the show on the night drawing the 2.9 rating in the most watched Raw of the month famously remembered for one of the biggest upsets in wrestling TV history in a match which saw Razor Ramon losing to the debuting jobber Sean Waltman as the 1-2-3 kid, setting up the angle for the rest of the month with Ramon offering Waltman more money to accept a rematch on a weekly basis. The final build-up to the first King of the Ring pay-per-view on June 7 saw Fuji and Yokozuna in Lawler's King's Court segment hyping the WWF title main event on Sunday against Hulk Hogan in what would be Hogan's final televised match in the company for almost the next decade.
with the show which drew a 2.5 rating facing strong sports competition on the night also featuring Diesel in Shawn Michaels' corner with Nash making his WWF TV debut, with the biggest draw of the month coming on June 21st for a show which in addition of featuring another high-profile match with Marty Jannetty and Oink the Clown going 21 minutes for the IC title, headlined by the heavily hyped rematch of Razor Ramon vs. 1-2-3 Kid from the talked about upset with Scott Hall doing a strong six-week build-up throughout the past two months increasing his offer on a weekly basis to make it one of the most anticipated TV matches of the year, resulting in the show drawing a 3.1 rating with over 1.8 million homes in the most watched Raw broadcast in almost two months. The Michaels vs. Janetti IC title rematch headlined Raw on July 19 to go over 20 minutes on television on a show drawing the 2.9 rating, on a night which also featured the start of the Lex Express tour coming off the footage of the Luger Yokozuna Body Slam Challenge shown on the July 5 Raw, with the most watched show of the month coming a week later with a Lex Luger interview with Vince McMahon building up his WWF title match against Yoko at SummerSlam. Along with the main segment of the night which first saw Bret Hart vs Bam Bam Bigelow going 17 minutes with the background angle in the middle seeing Jerry Lawler taunting Bret's parents in the crowd, followed by a post-match segment of Bret going after him in the build to the Bret vs Lawler match with the show drawing the month high 3 rating with around 2.7 million viewers. Randy Savage made his in-ring return to headline the first draw of August in a match against Doink to lead draw to its second highest placing in the top 10 most watched shows on cable television for the week, and with Luger gaining momentum on a weekly basis in the middle of his biggest main event push in the company to date. The August 9 draw built around the Luger vs Yokozuna contract signing for the Summer Slam title match saw the show spike into a joint record 3.4 rating with just a slight figure of around 5,000 less homes than the most watched draw show to date on the week following WrestleMania 9, giving strong signs of momentum for the Luger push in addition to the company drawing some of the biggest house show crowds of the year in the same week for events headlined by Yoko vs Brett doing strong numbers with the show a week later also at near record levels with a 3.2 rating and over 1.9 million homes tuning in on the final first run Raw heading into Summer Slam on August 30th. With Raw and the company in general starting to potentially catch fire with the three-way headliner of Yoko Luger and Brett drawing strong numbers on the road and on television. Raw faced for the first time in its history the momentum killer of the two-week preemptions on the USA Network, resulting in a show which didn't air in its regular time slot since August 16, taking a massive hit when coming back on September 13 to go from record levels to the lowest rated show in its eight-month history with a 1.8 rating, with the company gradually building back up its viewership for the rest of the month with the next two weeks rebounding strong to end at a 2.7 rating to go back to around the same numbers range as before the preemptions. With Monday Night Raw significantly increasing the WWF's numbers over its former Monday Night TV show in prime time wrestling. A deal was announced in October of USA Network renewing Raw for another two years, with the start of the 93-94 TV season seeing Raw peaking on October 18 for a show driven by a Randy Savage and Crush Summit segment conducted by Bobby Heenan, to see Raw drawing a 3 rating with over 1.8 million homes in its most watched show since the peak of mid-August, with another strong number slightly below it with a 2.9 rating coming a week earlier with Razor Ramon winning the vacant IC title over Rick Martel in a match built with a week of hype with both Manco winning a battle royal to set it up on October 4. After a strong number for their promo confrontation Randy Savage and Crush now building up to a WrestleMania 10 match next year highlighted another month higher all number on November 8 with a show-long brawl all over the building to make it the most watched Raw since their last segment on October 18, with the angle continuing the following week with the announcement of Savage being suspended from commentary with McMahon, as Raw closed November strong with a 3.1 rating for a show featuring Razor vs Diesel as the top match of the night, 
with the big segment of the show seeing Vince McMahon presenting the Wrestler of the Year award to Bret Hart along with Lex Luger as the runner-up. Raw closed the year strong with December averaging over a 3 rating, opening it on a notable show with it in addition to a 15-minute Michaels vs. Waltman match, seeing the final WWF appearance of Bobby Heenan in his original run in a show-closing confrontation with Gorilla Monsoon which saw Monsoon throwing him out of the building in a cliffhanger finish, with the follow-up of the Heenan angle the following week on December 13 in addition to a loaded card with Randy Savage Bret Hart and Undertaker all working singles matches throughout the hour. Seeing Raw jumping to a near-record 3.3 rating with over 2 million homes in its third most-watched broadcast to date.